rocking and rolling. Cheers, baby. Cheers. Let's get it. Yours smells a lot stronger than mine. Yeah. It's Evian. <laughs> it's purified. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, welcome. Um, this is a little roundtable discussion uh, that we're going to talk about Heart on Fire. Me and Christian put this together, and we just feel like it'd be great for you guys to get some perspective on what went into making this and where it all came from. So so where did it all come from? Ooh, that's a great question. You just set up the first question. You just started it nice and right to the meat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so... I had written this um, a couple months ago. You know, I just was going through something, and I just had written it out. It ended up being, like, three pages long. And it was just a, a dump, you know. In a few hours, I had some feelings, and I just dumped them on a page. And one day, I was like, you know, I think I want to shoot this. And I, when you say dump, this isn't like a this isn't like a small dump. This is has been brewing for how long? Like, how long, long has this been brewing for? This particular thing has been brewing pretty much my whole life which is huge yeah like you saying that alone is like it is extremely impactful um especially to me knowing you like it's a huge dump yeah it's a lot and for people that are watching it and and you know interpreting it in whatever way that they're interpreting it don't even necessarily know how big of a dump it is on your end but creatively gives them the opportunity to get to like see a piece of themselves and in, in the dialogue but yeah yeah that's they, that's pretty much where it came from. And I knew I wanted to shoot it. Um, I knew I wanted some visuals to the audio. But what it became from what I had initially thought, I think, was, you know, worlds bigger and better than I could have imagined. Because I was, I remember when we talked about it when I first laid it out, I was like, you know, I just kind of wanted visuals. And it, was, it wasn't that I wanted to attach the visuals to the audio. I just wanted them to be interesting. Right. And you asked me and you said... Through this, what is your intent? What are you really talking about here? And what does this mean? And it really got me thinking. I'm like, okay, well, why not take this opportunity to really, um, you know, intertwine the words with the shots and not do it in a way that's so on the nose that people are like, oh, he's literally talking about this. But it's very metaphorical, but also literal, but ambiguous enough that people can relate to it in their own way. Mm. And not just, okay, this is just a struggle that D's going through. I feel like it's a struggle that everyone goes through. Right. Yeah, I don't think the shots visually were, were too nail on the head mm -hmm. or too literal for your specific scenario. Yeah. But they were wi a wide enough spectrum that people could s probably relate to majority or specific ones. Yeah. yeah. Which is nice. Yeah. That it, it can reach that, that large of a spectrum of people. Yeah. The one, and I'll just get it out of the way right now because it's, the question I've gotten the most is what is it about? And I've made the conscious decision to not tell anybody. Right. And the reason is because... Except me, I know. Yes. <laughs> you and a few other people. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason is because it means something to me and I know the place that it came from, but listening to the feedback that I got from it and how everyone interpreted it in a different way, people are like, I think it was about this and I think it was about that. For me... It was almost like seeing my words filtered through somebody else's own trauma and how it affected them and how it, what it made them feel. Right. Was more impactful to me than me telling them it means this and it it puts it in a box. Right. That oh, okay, this is these words are intense but they mean this thing, so I can't really relate to it cuz I haven't gone through that specific thing. Instead, I've left it ambiguous and I'm going to continue to do that so people can take it however they want. You know, there's Feelings are are very they're 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 the same within all of us. We feel them, the causes of them are different, but we feel pain, we feel hurt, we feel happiness, we feel sadness. We all feel that. It's crazy to to wonder what some of these viewers that you said that have gotten emotional watching the piece, mm -hmm. like what they were relating to in that. Obviously, like it's, like we've been talking about, not knowing you from from that deep of a past and 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 what this is all about yeah. how what was it that they were relating to that was making them so emotional because mm -hmm. that's like that's crazy to think about because obviously for me watching it now after we've made it yeah like i get emotional watching it too because i because i know you and i understand it and i understand yeah. the piece but these people that are like breaking down watching it, it's like what were they relating to what did it invoke in them right that made them feel that way and i think to me, I'm happy 
as sad as that is, I'm happy because it, it lets me know that my point got across. We all go through pain in life. And I made a conscious decision this year that I'm going to stop hiding and trying to project this, this facade of strength and note this is actor Demetrius. He has his wall up. He has to keep this professional exterior because that's what you're taught in the industry. You have to, if you want to have a, a, a long career and you want to be someone who's free of drama, you kind of have to be that way. But I think that's selfish because I have the ability and I have a voice and I have a platform that I can share in the things that I'm going through and know that people that are around me and people that follow me, people who watched my things I've gone through as well and do it in a creative way. And, and that's just how I can as an artist. Like we hear music all the time. We identify with it so much because the words are coming from a place of something real that those artists have felt. And we identify with it because that's what we felt too. Right. So I was like, okay, I need to offload this for myself personally. I've been, just been carrying this shit for so long. And I'm like, let me do it in a way that someone can get something from it, maybe. 100%. And you have a lot more to offer and to give than to be reserved yeah. and, you know, remain in the the box the, the box of what people expect you to do, you know? Yeah. And that's, that's why I love this project. And when you, you know, brought the dialogue to the table and were like, you wanted to make this, it was like, 100 percent there's there's not a world where we where we don't make that project yeah you know what i mean like it's too it's too impactful to sit on it and to not make it yeah although like we like we talked about it is ambiguous and mm -hmm. you know like we can leave it up to the viewer to relate to whatever it is that they want but yeah. just you even alone like bringing that kind of a a, a dump as we called it at the <laughs> beginning to the table to like make yeah is huge that's big that's big steps in in the industry too of like you getting out of that comfort zone of being so reserved and willing to put everything on the line and then giving people the opportunity to watch it and then them also get to emotionally put everything on the line because they're watching it and relating to things that they're going to have a dump yeah. you know like of just emotion like whatever it is some people might have trauma and the traumas from the past that yeah they haven't had the opportunity to get to release but watching something like that and relating to your dialogue in the way that they would relate to it just gives them that opportunity to release like these, this and, emotional and build up. Also too, um, it helps coming from somebody that, that you look up to or somebody that you appreciate or somebody that you don't expect it from. Because a lot of times we get into these, these places of, I feel this way, but I can't, I can't show that I feel this way. People are so scared of being vulnerable. Like vulnerability is like the enemy of most people because in that space, you are your truest self and you are the most susceptible to attack and pain and pain sucks. You know what I mean? So accepting that and being vulnerable and, and, and putting that out there is scary for most people. But if I can kind of lead and maybe be like, well, let me show you what my vulnerability has gotten me and the things that I've had to navigate by being that way, it might bring people out of their shell and say, oh, okay, well, if he's willing to, to put things that he's gone through out there in a very public way, well, why can't I? Or why can't I be okay with experiencing the things that I'm experiencing instead of trying to suppress them and push them down? Because that's what I've done. And acting was the outlet for me to, to be able to hit the purge valve, which is why I've always been able right. to hit these emotional scenes and, and dive right into them because that's what I was doing. I was going into my little cupboard of emotions and being like, oh, pain, oh, I got a lot of pain. Psh. Let me just put a little bit of that in, a little bit of sadness, a little bit of anger. Boom. There we go. And I think that's unhealthy. I mean, it works, but to, to bottle that that up and, and keep that in your person is unhealthy. And I like that you're admitting that. It's I like that you're admitting that yeah. because because it works, but it's not healthy. It's not. And like a lot of that that's how a lot of us navigate, isn't it? It works, but it's but at the end of the day it's not healthy. This leading into a question though, so obviously you know, we've been talking about the viewers now. They've been interpreting it. What What are you hoping to give to the viewers? Um, or what were you hoping mm -hmm. to achieve by releasing this project? What What did you want them to uh, get out of the project? I think ultimately the goal was giving... People have seen me as Michael Dallas. People have seen me as Michael Davies. People have seen me as Porter Jackson. People have seen me as X, Y, and Z but nobody's seen me as Demetrius Joyette. 
and I wanted to give people me. You know, I've had and I have loyal fans from all around the world, people who have watched me and have grown up watching me, who still support me to this day, even though I haven't really been in their face like I used to be. And people have seen me through somebody else's lens. I wanted to show people who I really am through my lens. Right. Because as actors, we don't really get that opportunity. And this was probably the biggest pin drop for me as of late was realizing that I'm I'm putting myself out there and constantly auditioning and, and, and you know, as an actor trying to navigate other people's molds. But I was like, you know what? I, I think it's time for me to do things that I want to do and, and see myself how I want to be seen and be honest, you know, and, and right now in my life and the things that I've experienced, I've got a, a lot of a lot of baggage that I'm carrying. And I'm like, well, what's the best way of articulating that? But also giving people what they might want to see. Hmm. And I was like, hard on fire is that because that literally I wake up in the morning and my chest is burning. You would never guess because I can put up the exterior, but inside I'm freaking burning. And I'm like, how can I do something with this? How can I turn this into something productive? All right, let's make something. It's regrettable that it's taken me this long to finally come to the table and say, all right, D, start making your own stuff and, and putting it out there. The, op the, the, the avenues are so clear now with social media. You know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, actors didn't have these outlets. Mm -hmm. Maybe it might have been an acting class or, or a stage performance, and you would impact maybe 100, 200 people. Now you have the whole world at your fingertips. Yeah, now you can pull millions of views and reach millions of people with a, a piece that otherwise would have been either swept under the rug or hidden, which is exciting. Yeah. It's an exciting time to be in. And it's just, I think, also seeing other people, like Drake's a perfect example. You know, people love to clown on him. But what's made him who he is is obviously he's extremely talented, but he's not scared to talk about the things that have happened in his life and that are happening in his life and the relatable pain and the things that he goes through, even someone at his level. And that's why people love him. And that's why people identify with him and his lyrics. It means something to everybody. It doesn't matter how old, young you are, male, female. It just... He says things that everyone can say, damn, I've been through that. But that's art, isn't it? That's what it is. Like being like genuine with your intentions and in creating, like all the things that he's creating, obviously, yeah, just on the scale in which he's operating, his business is massive, but he's, I'm sure, being the majority of the time, if not all the time, genuine with what he talks about and the things he feels. Yeah. What's crazy, what I was just thinking about is that, you know, we were talking about how you are creating something for yourself they've people have seen you do other projects and play other characters and now you're yep. officially creating a demetrius joyette project there's still going to be probably a good amount of people out there that are going to see this and not know that but think that they're watching another short film yeah you know what i mean yeah. which is which is weird to think about yeah and and i like that because however you want to interpret it right please do because i'm almost realizing based off of the feedback that I, I've gotten is just I'm hearing other people's trauma through the things that they're saying. And it's almost like it's enlightening to me that that's what it's coming out as. And everybody that I've spoken to on a personal level has had a different kind of idea. And I'm like, whoa, wow, it really it invoked that in you just the same way it's invoked this in me to create this. Right. And it's just like, it's motivated me so much more to say, well, why, why I can't stop now. And, and honestly, that's like, I think we've talked about this before. It's one of the main reasons why I love creating. It's just, I love people's reactions to stuff. Yeah. I love seeing how it's, how it has affected somebody mm -hmm. like that, that, that for me is if, if, if I could only get one thing out of it, that would probably be the one thing I would want to get out of it, which is just seeing how people, how it's impacted people. Yeah. And that's a, like, I mean, yes, you could, you could arguably say that you're creating for yourself and be selfish and say, yeah, I'm creating this because I want to create this. Mm -hmm. But like, there's, if you're putting anything into the public eye, you're, you're putting something out there in hopes that it's going to be seen and watched and reach people. So. And you know, what, I, to piggyback off of that too, I remember we had this conversation. You want them to, you want them to, 
enjoy and, impe- and like, take something from it. Yeah, hundred right? percent. Or else, why are you doing it then? At the end of the day, what's the point? And if you are doing it for yourself, then you could put it on a VCR tape and sit in a basement <laughs> and, 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 and watch it, it over and over again. And show it to your mom and your dad and, and your sisters, it. and that's it. And let it be it. But I think the biggest thing, and and this is kind of a little, you know, wide, but when we talked about this thing, it's probably over Chick Fil A, like we do a lot, right? was about what we're trying to do on this earth. What is our purpose and what am I here for? And I looked at kind of what I have and what I've created. And I'm like, okay, I've created some stuff. But at the end of the day, when I'm gone, are people going to remember me? Are people going to look back on Demetrius and say, wow, okay, I got something from this guy? Or are they going to look back and say, oh, he posted cool Instagram pictures and you know, he had a couple of shows where he played some funny characters, right? I, I feel like that I would be selling myself short. And it's not selfishly to be like, I want to leave a legacy, but it's more so that I feel like I have so much more to give. And while I'm still alive and I'm still here on this earth, why don't I give everything that I can in 100%. hopes that it helps somebody? 100%. And yeah, obviously more specifically for the entertainment industry, like that's, you know, it's it goes, it's different in, in other fields. But yeah. like, yeah, in the entertainment industry, you know, you, you want to leave behind like all the um, like ev- everything if you think about it like this everything is an archive everything that we're going to create or creating currently mm-hmm. is going to be an archive of our lives and and our and the things that set our hearts on fire right yeah and those are going to live on to impact people much longer than we are going to be on this earth mm-hmm. i would much rather go out having left behind something that will be able to live on with people and in their hearts and impact them the same way I did when I was still here, yeah. then leave knowing I could have done more and I could have offered more and could have impacted people more. I agree. On a, in a positive way. I agree. And it's, it's, that, it's that simple. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't need to be complicated. And I think a lot of people overthink that, that, that side of it where they're like, I don't know if it's right for like you know how we talk about people's intentions all yeah. the time and why they're doing mm-hmm. why they're doing this shit i think a lot of it boils down to the same thing you know i said earlier is the vulnerability and the insecurity people are scared to be vulnerable putting themselves and putting their true selves out there in the world leaves you open to criticism and judgment and it's hard to take that you know i've taken it my whole life i'm used to it but that holds a lot of people back and it's kind of held me back too because i've always had this idea of what my acting persona would be or how how my career would go right and nothing has teed up so it's either i can sit here and wallow in that and just be like oh crap defeated about it or i can say you know what i need to take charge and start doing things my own way and offer a side of myself that I honestly don't even offer myself, but do it in a way that people can take something from it. And I think leading, sometimes, you know, you need, people need to, to, to see somebody else do it first. Right. And say, wow, okay, if he's willing to do it, I, I can do it too. Yeah. 100%. And I think that's the most important thing, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm not just, just doing it to do it. I think the intent behind it is that somebody takes something from it. If someone takes something away from this and they think about it and it maybe helps them through something or, even if it's as simple as, well, I'm not alone. I'm not alone in this. And that helps them through their day. I've, I've accomplished my goal. Yeah. And that's 100%. All, that's, that's all I want. You know, that's all I want to leave it on. So we'll follow up into now. Obviously, this is another um, really asked question is the production. Everyone, Everyone wants to know. Oh, geez. I was going to say, I was looking at the questions. How we like, shot it, what we shot it with. A potato, by the way. A, a freaking potato. <laughs> a potato with a lens. <laughs> a potato with a lens. <clears throat> That'd be so funny. Um, yeah, I mean, Black Magic, uh, Pocket 4K on a 25 millimeter Voigtlander, uh, Micro Four Thirds lens, and that's it. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. Just, just run and gun style. We're actually filming on it right now. Um, yeah, run and gun style, just pick up and shoot. And we have like a, a we had a really good rig and, mm-hmm. um, a really compact setup. So we could basically go and shoot whatever if we needed to switch over to, um, 
you know, the Ronin S or whatever, we could do it. And we, we did a lot. We shot a lot on our own location too, which was, which was awesome. We didn't need to go out and rent anything, no. spend any money. We actually didn't spend any money on this project at all other, other than our time. That's all we spent. But yeah, everything that we shot was gorilla locations that we had access to or our locations or in the mountains, you know? Yeah. But anyone could, it was all, it was a, a timing thing. Obviously we planned a little bit, but just got out there and we did it. And then we also, you had a drone as well. We had the drone. Yeah. The Mavic Pro. Mavic Pro. Okay. Um, again, like super compact and just pack it up and go. We'd like to use a little bit of a bigger drone next time just because the winds get so hectic yeah, up there and it's so were, hard to control. Was, I was freezing. Yeah. I was literally standing there like this. Yeah, it's just so hard to control <laughs> when the winds are that crazy. Yeah. But yeah, no, that that was all the equipment that we used. And then obviously we recorded um, the audio here mm -hmm. on the Shure SM7B and came out super crisp. That was honestly like the roadmap for this. Once we heard That's that audio, started, yeah. it's like where you start to really visualize like what this shot list is going to look like. That's what we did too, right? Yeah. We, we started, we laid it out. We, we took the initial, I wouldn't even call it a monologue because it was like probably six minutes. Right. Clip that down. And then we're like, all right, let's just throw the audio on it. Let's see how it sounds. Right. Like three takes. We're like, this is it. Good. Is good. Money. And started banging out the shot list. And even, and it was funny because we had like what, 10, 15 different shots laid out at moments. A lot. We had a lot. A lot more than that, actually. We probably had 10, 15 moments within the first page, and there was like a, a two and a half pages, I think, of shots. Yeah. Which would have been overwhelming, I think, work-wise yeah. and even viewer-wise, of yeah. like having trying to cram too much in there. Because it would have been too stimulating over the audio. But then we shot the workout stuff first. Right. And then I remember we came up, we cut it. Put it in the timeline. And then we said, wait a second. These moments are really breathing. You want to live in it a little bit more. Exactly. Then get because we, when we initially cut it, we kind of ripped through it. We kind of made the 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 cuts happen pretty quickly because we're like, oh, we got to kind of shave up this much time yep. in order to continue these other three shots that we want to incorporate in yeah. this one moment. And then I was just kind of watching it like that's going to be really rough in the edit. It's yeah. not going to look like, especially because there had to be a harmony between the words so that you could hear them and understand them, but apply them to the visuals but in a way that the visuals aren't distracting because if you had constant cut shots yeah your brain is trying to disseminate what you're looking at right and you're also it's also trying to understand what you're hearing right and the audio is quite you know it's it's not fast so if there's a bunch of cutting around and lots of action and movement and stuff like that you're going to get distracted right and you're going to miss points and i didn't want people to miss it i wanted people to see something but be able to correlate the dialogue to what they were seeing in a way that was harmonized so that one didn't detract from the other. Right. So that they worked well together in sync so that, okay, I understand. This is this is what's going on here. It would have been overwhelming. It would have been, yes, exactly. Like, the word. It, it would have been a lot. It would have been intense. Um, okay, and then that leads us to, I remember this. Um, what was the most difficult part of the filming process? Um, I have my answer. Really? Yeah. Um, I was going to be completely different now. Probably. I'm trying to think of, I don't think any of it was really difficult. I think there was a couple moments where I wish we'd had more resources. Mm -hmm. I think overall, just certain scenarios, like I said, we we're pretty gorilla. Yeah. So didn't have much equipment. Yeah. Like we were kind of just running, gunning, shooting this thing, but. I would say instead of like there being difficult moments, I would say there'd be maybe some regrets than difficult moments. I think mm -hmm. we shot it pretty seamlessly, but I think I think so. I think like I would have, I would have liked to go back and like relight certain shots a mm -hmm. different way, or add more lighting because mm -hmm. now I've just added so much more lighting to my, mm -hmm. you know, my equipment <laughs> log. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, definitely like lighting, and then uh, there. Were, oh, you know what the the night sh the night stuff. That was, that yeah. was, yeah. When we were shooting at night, like, yeah, zero external lights. The mm -hmm. lighting was horrible. A little grainy. Yeah, and it looked really, it, it was weird. The monitor made it look better than it was. And when I got back to mm -hmm. the computer, it was, it's workable, but I was like, crap. Uh, I wish I would have had, like, one external light, just one. Mm -hmm. But that's it. That's learning. For what me, about you? the hardest part was starting. Mm. Right? Right. The hardest part was taking the words off the page and 
putting them into action because I can I can still remember from probably since I was, you know, in early early teens, 13, 14, 15, I had shot some things, fun things, whatever. But in terms of actually putting a script together, you know, coming up with the concept and actually getting out and shooting, there would always be this divide that the words just wouldn't come off the page mm. for one reason or another. And I feel like I would make excuses as to why, because that's really all it could be. I don't right. care how good they were. They were excuses. So the hardest part for me was like, all right, get off your butt and actually make something and put it out into the world and see what happens. You know, it, it, there's there's no harm that can come from this. So after actually now opening that door and starting, I feel like, all right, cool. We got one under the belt, you know? Yeah. I, I don't feel nearly as like... You also see, you see what you can do with little to nothing. Yeah. I mean, look, we do have a we do have a pretty solid rig. Yeah. So we're able to do probably a lot more than just shoot with an iPhone, for example. But people are shooting on iPhones. Yeah. Like I think in general, everyone just needs to be way more. If you're a creative, just needs to be way more active at, at whatever level. If it is shooting with an iPhone, it's shooting shooting with an iPhone. And I st still film with an iPhone. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like once you see what you're capable of doing with with minimal, it creates this whole other like avenue of creative to where you can use minimal as a as a template now of like ah yeah. oh, what else can i do with just this mm -hmm. could i do something with just a bathroom right mm -hmm. like what could i do with just in a bathroom there's endless possibilities right i told you about that short that I, like i that i wanted to i wrote and i wanted to film which was just the whole thing takes place in the in in the party uh, at a party in a bathroom of in the bathroom of the party yeah. and it's like what what do you need to shoot that Two people, you know, could shoot on an iPhone. It's the relatability. Yeah. That's well, all that matters. Now that the door's open, yeah. it gives you that layout of like, oh, okay, I have another idea that could work in the same world that we just shot this one in. Yeah. Not require any budget up front. Yeah. Not require any additional crew. You know, we can do it with the same setup. Could even do it with less. Even. Could even do yeah. it with less. Yeah. And that's, and it's, it's funny. motivating. The, the, the one thing that I, I had noticed as well is some of the most influential content that I've seen recently has been from TikTok. Right. I know obviously it's a big platform. There's a lot of stuff on there, but just seeing what people are able to create simply with just their words and a couple of shots on their phone and how that impacted me, it inspired me as well to say, wow, it's not what you do. It's how you do it. Right. Right. And there's been plenty of things that I've watched where the production value was insane. It was amazing, but it was devoid of anything that I could relate to. So I got bored. I was like, OK, you know, how many cool shots are we going to do before I'm like, at what point do I start feeling something about this? That's why TikTok is so big compared to the rest of like the industry yeah. is because you're getting more like lower quality, less production, but better intention yeah. content than just like overproducing something and trying to, you know, throw a hundred million dollar marketing budget at it to get it in front of people. Exactly. This content is finding people. You know what I mean? Like, because of the way it makes them feel. One person yeah. watches it, they watch they it share. four times and share. then they share it. And then that person watches it four or five times and yeah. then they share it. And then that just ripples all the way down. And next thing you know. And it's a seven second video. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like. This is a good time. This is a good time to be active and a good time to, to just be you know, experimenting and on it. And I think I'm realizing that now it's taken me because I'm, I feel like I'm just an old fashioned guy, Right. you know, go, you know, you move to LA, you go in the audition room, you kill it, you book on a show, you prove it, blah, 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 blah. blah and then you work your way up. And yeah. I mean, that, that works and that happens, but it's, you know, and we've been kind of operating on both different ends of the spectrum, literally, which is like, I've been, I've been like, I need to make this happen yeah. regardless of whether I can get in the room or not. And it's just been, a, it's a perspective shift now for me to be yeah. like, why? Right. Why am I putting my destiny in other people's hands? Yeah, and we can just make more shit. That's what it comes down to. We just make more shit. So what, so after this project, what's, ne what's next now? <laughs> <laughs> Without saying too much, what's next? Well, I got another one in the works um, along the same vein. Just more of my life experience, more of things that have gone on and... 
Am I filming and directing this one, or are you gonna get? Or are you doing getting I someone don't know. else? I mean, you did pretty are good you, on the. You know, are you moving one. up now? Or are you like? I think I might give you one or two more. One you know or two more I mean? shots. And then we'll renegotiate the contract after right, three. Right. Okay. <laughs> right. But the one thing I will say is, um, I'm I'm not sorry for the the people that might get offended that know and who are part of it all because you know what you're part of my journey, <laughs> and it might it might hurt you a little bit, but hey, it hurt me too, and I'm turning that pain into to creative expression so that other people going through it. But you don't have to be sorry though, dude. Oh, I'm not. Because you know everyone does this. Exactly. We we're just talking about Drake. We're to yeah. you think that he's apologetic to all the people that he's written it's, Marvin's room? You know what I mean? <laughs> like you think he's apologetic you to know these what's, people? You know what's crazy? I'm almost thankful. It's like, yeah, going through the things that I've gone through in my life, they suck in the moment. But dude, like it, it's like going to the gym and just blasting the heaviest set and just that lactic acid just kicking your ass. And then coming back next week rebuilt right that much stronger that's where i'm at and it's like i'm just bringing it back to that that moment of when that lactic acid was was literally kicking my butt up and down the floor mm. and just putting it into a way that's palatable for people and i'm i'm thankful for it it's weird it's to sit here and say like i'm actually thankful for my pain and the shit that i've experienced and the strife that i've had to go through in my life because it's it's given me the fuel and it's energized me to do something about it and do it in a way that's actually going to be constructive to me and, and my future. And I think the wisdom that it brings too is mm -hmm. just the most important thing. Mm -hmm. The most important aspect of it is how much wisdom it brings to every now moving forward, every n decision that you make moving forward now yeah. is coming from a completely different place. And Think about that creatively now, like yeah. with your intentions creatively. Now, when you're creating, you're coming from a completely different place based on real emotions, real experiences, yeah. real stories that have happened articulated in your own way Yeah. for, you know, the consumption of people yeah. and <clears throat> seeing how they relate to it, too. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to relate to the next project as well as the, the one after that one and the one after that one that you're going to make the same way they related to. Yeah. Hard on fire. It's humbling, too, because, I mean, I've had people my whole life coming up to me and being like, hey, I like your work and blah, 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 blah. And I love that. But I've always been able to separate myself from the work that I've done because I always just looked at it like it was work. Right. right? If I was ever like I remember, you know, being 10, 11, 12, 13 years old, having to wear a dress and a wig and stuff. That was kind of hard for me as a young <clears throat> boy, because as a dude, you're like. I can't do that type of stuff. It makes me feel weird. But I was able to just like isolate myself from be like, well, no, this is not my stuff. I'm just doing this because I got to do it, you know? So I was able to disassociate myself from a lot of that feedback, good or bad, and not really let it affect me. But now because this is mine, this is me entirely, there's a different kind of like, wow, you know, when I hear it and I'm like, really like it, th that's really how you felt that's it's insane to me because i'm not doing it expecting a certain certain type of reaction and I, i'm not trying to invoke a certain type of reaction i'm just speaking the truth that's all so when i hear how people take it it's it's humbling like hell and it motivates me to be like okay cool wow all right let, let's just keep doing this right people are getting something from this i'm getting something from this man like how I feel like a huge weight's been lifted off your my reactions through the editing process were just golden. I couldn't even. I wish we would have got some of those on camera. Just I couldn't even watch it the first couple times, jumping around oh. and <laughs> just being excited about like how certain things were coming together, the certain shots were pulling together. Yeah, when we when we'd sit here and be like, okay, let's do it this way, blah blah blah. We'd mod, we'd make the little mod, and we'd bang it out, and just you see it, and you'd be like, no. And it came out exactly how you like envision it. Oh man! But no, for real. Like the first, once we had it cut, the first couple times watching it, my God, that was probably the hardest thing for me. And it's like even just <laughs> talking yeah. about it right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Woo! I, I'm just gonna be completely transparent. I've done more crying in the past, fuck, three, four weeks than I've done in my entire life. I'd just be driving, and should have hit me like a brick. And I'm just like, wow. I got all this inside me. You broke the seal. <laughs> so now, just trying to get so now, <laughs> now it's just going to be flowing out of you. Yeah. And that's a good thing, though. I think so. Can't hold back. And I think that's why we're here and why we're creating stuff is because, yeah. you know, just letting your emotions 
drive your you know your creative side yeah and when you think about it like that it's like your intentions are you know coming from a good place this is like how you feel inside and you need to express yourself you know from past trauma or just you holding in everything yeah it's like i mean it's inspiring it inspires me too you know it's gonna inspire a lot of people that you know people that now are aware that these pro like this first project is like a you know it's more so a, related to you like yeah. as demetrius like that's you know that's a whole other level of inspiration i feel like people will be like wow i didn't know that you know yeah peek behind the curtain and um it, it, i'm i'm here to stay in this in this space and i i want everyone to know and that the people who've, who've rode with me all this time like i i thank you guys you know i haven't given you anything and i'm, I'm sorry <laughs> on that front i am sorry but I promise, you know, going forward, I'm going to, you know, just continue to paint pictures and, and do things and, and give you guys, you know, something to, to see and to appreciate, hopefully, and, and just, you know, a whole new light. I haven't seen myself like this, and you haven't either. This is new ground, but it's a new age. And... I'm not the same person I was yesterday and I will not be the same person tomorrow that I am today. Every day I'm changing and I think it's going to be great to be able to document that because when I look back, when I'm older and I look at all the things that I've done in my life, even when we cut those clips of, you know, the younger me, it I haven't seen those clips in goddamn like 6 years. Yeah. And seeing them was so eye-opening and just realizing like, wow, you know, to look back at memories, you know, it's, it's a snapshot in time. We're so focused on right now and, like, I'm busy today and I got X, Y, and Z to deal with and blah, 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 blah. And even when we were shooting, you know, I got this to deal with. But watching it, all of that stuff doesn't exist because it's something that was happening in the moment that wasn't relevant. What we see is what we filmed. And that's what's going to live on past all the daily stuff that's going on. And I think that's what's important. Just like that snapshot in time of your life, you know? Wow. Agreed. Guess we could wrap it up here. We could wrap it up here, yeah. Um, anyway, thank you guys. I hope, you know, you got something from this. I hope you got something from the short. Uh, we really enjoyed making this. This was a lot of fun. Christian killing it on the, on the producing, directing, editing, lighting, everything. <laughs> Just an absolute monster. And this is the start. I'm going to continue to grind it out, continue to make stuff. For you guys and for myself, if I'm being completely honest, you know, I got a lot of stuff that I want to get off my chest and I think this is the best way for me. So, you know, congratulations, my boy. Appreciate you. All right, y'all. Peace.